Hello, fellow traders, tis I, the Rumpled One, coming to you Monday, May the 24th, the year's 2021. Let's talk trading. Trading without emotion. One thing you have to remember is this video is for educational purposes only, and your results may differ from mine. Trading without emotion. How can you possibly trade without emotion? Well, as I was explaining to some traders yesterday, uh, they were, they've been dabbling in uh, crypto. And I mentioned to them that, you know, trading's pretty simple. And it's the way I look at it is a three legged stool. And if one of the legs is short or not or missing, it's not going to stand. So the first leg, as I see it, is risk management. And that means you never lose more than you're willing to lose on any one particular trade. So, you know, when you walk in at a casino, you, you hope to win, but you know, chances are you might wind up losing. So you usually set a limit. You go, you know what? I'm not going to lose more than $200. And so you go in and you start, you know, placing bets and maybe you win some, you lose some. And if you walk out that casino and you haven't lost more than $200, then you stayed within your risk parameters and there's no reason to be upset. I mean, if you're sitting at the blackjack table and, you know, the, the dealer um, draws the card that gives them the winning hand, it's like, hey, that's just that's just the luck of the cards, right? Or, you know, you're at the roulette wheel and the ball's bouncing around and it like sits in one number. Maybe you bet on black and it's sitting on the black number for a split second and then it comes out and winds up on red. It's just like, oh man, but you know what? You, you, you don't really get that mad. That's just, that's just part of betting, part of gambling, right? just shrug it off and then once again if you uh wind up down 200 you just you lose all your chips that's it you don't go back for more chips and you're just done so that's the first leg you have your risk management in place and you do not fail to obey it second part which actually um isn't brain management the second part of trading without emotion is you pick a method and with that method you formulate your trading plan and you stick to that plan if that method says you go long at this horizontal line then that's what you do. If this method says when these squiggly lines do this, then you enter the trade, then that's what you do. So the method, whichever method you pick, doesn't matter per se. What matters is whether or not you stick to it. And a lot of times what will happen is traders will start trading their method that they've picked or invented and they might hit a little losing streak like maybe they lose three four or five trades in a row and what do they do instead of just saying you know what that's just the breaks that's just part of how things roll but if I stick with it it's gonna pay out in the long term now, no they don't, they don't think that way they get emotional and then they start messing with the method. They start tweaking this number. Maybe they add another indicator to it. They change the settings on an indicator. And they get all emotional and they just really mess up. So now the second leg of the stool is your method, your plan, and how you stick to it. Because if you don't stick to it, you might as well not have the plan, right? So first, 
you have your risk management, and then you have your trading plan. You could call that execution management if you like. And then the one that really gets people is the brain management, the psychology. This is where the emotions take over. Where you're sitting at the chart, looking at the chart, and even though your trading plan, your method hasn't given you a trigger, you see what you think to believe is an opportunity. And so you watch it, and of course, if you had taken that trade, you would have made, you know, mega pips, right? So what happens? Next time you're sitting in front of your, your uh, trading platform, watching the charts, you see something similar. And it's not in your plan. But what do you do? You click that mouse because now you've got delusions of grandeur that you're going to make these mega pips. And what happens? <laughs> the market takes mega pips out of your account. Because chances are, not only didn't you follow your trading plan, chances are you're not going to follow your risk management either. So <laughs> you're really working against yourself. And if you're laughing, you're probably only laughing because that's the voice of experience, right? So you can't do that. You have to stop doing that. You know, you can't do that FOMO or the ROMO. You just, you have to stop doing it. Now, most of you say easier said than done. Well, it depends on how you do it remember it's not what you do it's how you do it it's not you know what you trade it's how you trade it so and i mentioned this before if uh you take the uh some of the aspects of gambling and saying hey when i put this trade on i'm i'm placing my bet and if if i lose i'm only going to lose you know so much then i'll if, then the next time it comes along i'll place another bet and since when you place your bet, nothing from that point is in your control. All you do is wait. So what you do is, is you put your stop loss on your trade because that keeps you from losing more than you're willing to lose. There's your risk management. And then on the money management side, you go ahead and you put your TP on. However you want to put your TP on. And then when you execute the trade, you don't watch it anymore. You don't do you, you, you don't watch that chart. You leave it alone. And maybe you can just sit and look at your uh, at the terminal and see if you're up or down. But as far as looking at the chart, that would allow you to manage the trade? No, just leave it alone. You know, come back in a half hour or 15 minutes, however long you think it takes. Or maybe if you can have something set up to send you a text message or an email with the results of that trade. But just don't watch it. Or if you really, really, really want to watch it, Take your, disconnect your mouse or put your mouse in the drawer, put it away so you can't mess with the trade because you've already got the parameters set. So you just might have to do something drastic to keep yourself from doing something stupid because you know better, you, you know, not to move your stop which some traders do, you know you need to put it on in the first place. And you know you probably shouldn't be adding into the trade if it's a loser. So, you know, just make sure you can't mess with the trade once it's on. And then there's no reason to be emotional. It takes all the emotion out.
I mean, if you wait for that report, oh, I won. Okay, great. Oh, I lost. Oh, well. But in between the entry and the exit, there's no reason to ride that em emotional roller coaster that I know some traders do. Because I know how I get. I could be up two pips and then in the blink of an eye, you know, I'm, I'm down a pip and it's, you know, I start cussing at the screen sometimes. Or actually, nowadays, I usually don't cuss at the screen. I just laugh. It's to me, it's just, it's just like, can you believe that? But I was watching uh, these guys with some crypto and the one guy told me, he goes, you know, it's scary. I mean, he, he, these are, are country boys. They ain't afraid of anything. You know, they go hunting and fishing and, you know, that, nothing scares them, right? He says, yeah, but when I got a lot of money <laughs> riding on a trade, it scares, it's scary. Because, you know, you can see Bitcoin was at uh, 37,000, then it's at 38, then it's maybe he's back. So it's like maybe he's up a thousand, now he's back to even. And so that, that's just that emotional roller coaster. It's like, just don't ride it. So if you have any questions or comments, I'd love to hear back from you on this. So moving on, looking at the monthly chart, you can see here 100. 40 pips over the previous month high at the moment. And at the weekly, we've got one, two gaps that haven't filled yet. So we still have the rest of the week to see if they fill. And we're only five pips above the weekly daily open since it's still Monday. We're in the 40 launch pad. And, you know, that's one of those ones I uh, started up the trade and I saw where the pound was and I was then got distracted and was, working on a program or something and next thing i know it goes from 25 up to the 40s and it's like oh it's in the launch pad i missed out on that one and then i got in at 40 something thinking you know it's probably going to hit 60 which it did and of course i punched out with only a couple pips because it stopped on the way up i saw i basically i followed my rules so i'm not regretting it i'm not upset I just laugh because that's what happens. I, I saw the one ball appear, and my rule says if you're down and then you, you're up and you see a one ball, you get out. Even though that one ball sometimes means it's going to break out and continue. Just don't take the chance. Okay, 507 pips above that yearly open. We are in that inside bar that happened two days ago. You can see we broke through the previous day's low. 61 pips of range right now only two pairs over 100 kind of a muted muted range day not much range happening we haven't hit the pivot got close haven't hit it but as you can see you know you can make money getting close you don't have to hit the pivot because if you got in say at 53 hit a high of 71 you could have banked over 10 pips no reason to give it back especially when it crossed back into this wick zone from the previous hour on during that next hour one once it hit this i mean right there was a key did it make a newer high no it's going back in that candle bottom body just get out right there should have been the line saying no then you could say well wait a minute what did you just say about um you know if i set my stop loss set my tp um don't don't exit the trade, you know, just leave it alone. Yes, that's true. Then again, there's a certain thing about managing money. And as you, uh, as price is going your way, you might want to move your stop loss up so you don't let a winner become a loser because that's not smart. So you have to, you know, make these things your own. Red rats, I don't see, I don't know if they're going to feast or not. The range is so low. Pivot once again. Didn't get hit. Uh, why do I have that on the yen? Pound didn't get hit. In and out of the upper wick zone. Oh, I'm sorry, lower wick zone. Uh, coming out of that imbalance there. Simple long mall trade right here at 50 would, would have paid off. That's just the stats. 
and the higher low lower high trade we got a one ball coming in so fellow traders just remember it's not what you trade it's how you trade it so drain the banks this is the rumple one over now